Hello and welcome to another Derp Shield Tekkit tutorial. Today we will be covering the fusion reactor, the poor man's fusion reactor. Alright, to start out, you just place down the fusion reactor. Then you want to place down the thermometer right next to it. In the current build of Tekkit, the max heat a fusion reactor can be at is 700. So right click on the thermometer until it's at 600 just to be safe then you want to have place a control rod on one of the sides down one level and a sticky piston underneath that now I am using redneck cables but you could use anything here um, I just prefer redneck cables because they seem to work better for situations where you need redstone around water. Alright, so at this point, whenever the fission reactor reaches 600 degrees, a redstone signal will go from the thermometer to the sticky piston, send up the control rod, and that will be next to the fusion reactor and that will shut the fusion reactor down until it is below that heat. Alright, so for the next bit you can use any amount of materials that you want. I'm just going to make the biggest reactor that you can make, which is a 5x5. Five five. Alright, so pretty much it's just two away from the fission reactor is what you can do. So grab your water, because this is a turbine reactor. Put water in all the corners if that's all you want. If you want, you can make it all uh, source blocks by adding in a couple more blocks, uh, buckets of water in other places, and it will become all source blocks so you don't have the running water. Then you want to put as many turbines as you want uh, down above the water. Let's just use the one for now just to see how much power it will generate. Grab a multimeter and a resonant energy cell. Alright, now you just right click the fission, uh, a fizzle rod, right there, fizzle rod, into the um, reactor and it will go, If you, and you can just right click it again to take the rod out. If you want to see the temperature you have to take it out and then put it back in manually, but as you'll see, 600, control rod went up, and it's not exploding. Alright, so that will generate heat and heat the water. Uh, probably shouldn't have put the turbine directly over the control rod because that won't uh, generate much power. But a single control uh, uh, turbine will produce three thousand nine hundred ninety five RF per tick which is quite honestly more than you'll ever need for a long time when you start out but each uh, turbine that you add to it afterwards will decrease this amount will decrease the amount that each one generates uh, for example that is eight thousand four hundred which is less than the um, 39, uh, 3.9 times 2, which would be 7.8, I believe. Or okay, maybe it's a bit more. Uh, but we got to remember that the redstone energy conduits can only take 10,000 RF per tick. So right here, uh, with only two turbines running, um, hmm, now it's giving a less. Oh well. Uh, it's, only, it's giving 7.9, so if you add another redstone cable, you're going to be losing 
you're well, you're only going to be gaining uh, two thousand one hundred ish re uh, RF per tick because that's all this energy conduit can support. But if we add another redstone energy cell right there, you will not max out either of the lines because it's sending power equally to each one. Uh, any one conduit cannot be having 10,000 RF per tick. Anyway, so that's how you make a fizzle reactor. It's relatively cheap um, to get started, but the unfortunate thing about it is it will consume materials quite quickly. For example, when we put this in, it's been running for like two minutes at this point. It only has 2,330 seconds left and a full fizzle reactor fuel rod will last about 41 minutes and it requires three yellow room or three uh, uranium t down the center with empty cells on the side so it's not a lot to make but you will go through materials quite quickly quite quickly if you wish to make a fizzle reactor but it is extremely powerful early game for uh, um, some amount of materials but it's not as much as a fusion reactor. One thing which I forgot to add for the fizzle reactor uh, because I forgot about it is they produce waste materials um, over time so if you let those wastes build up to its maximum capacity the fission reactor will blow up and probably destroy your base with that explosion since it's reasonably large. A way to get rid of it is to have a redstone e engine next to a wooden fluid pipe coming out of the bottom of the fizzle reactor into a void pipe. This will just destroy the uh, nuclear waste. If we go up to here, we'll see that, hey, it's actually going down. Uh, don't know what happened to the fizzle rod, but we'll just stick that back in. And it will be producing waste slower than the redstone engine can pump out the waste. Anyway, thanks. Bye-bye.